Hey folks, welcome back to Grubby's Great Outdoors. Did not think we'd get a chance to video today, but the weather's holding off for us for a minute. We got the canopies up just in case. Well, as you can tell from the intro, we're doing it, chicken lollipops. These things are so fun to eat, so fun to make, but they're not real fun to prep. So uh, we're doing 48 of them using the Weber kettle. And in full disclosure, Mrs. Grumpy and I did prep 47 of them last night. I kept one out so I can show you guys how to do it. We'll get them on the Weber kettles. We're gonna use the Vortex in each one of them, doing 16 per kettle. But first, let's start with showing you how to trim and how to season them up. All right, folks, let's start off showing you what we're gonna use for our rub. We're using the Gospel of a Meat Church. It's a very good all-purpose barbecue rub, but it's for a church function tonight, so I thought what better rub than use the Gospel. So that's what we're gonna use. It's very good, loses it quite a bit, like it a lot. So we can take our, our chicken leg here and we're gonna cut the skin off the bottom quarter of it, so to speak, and then push it all down to make the lollipop. So we'll show you here how we do that. We're gonna cut about from about right here all the way around the leg. Cut all you can, all the tendons and skin and even a little bit of meat probably, just get it all the way around. And then we're gonna pull that skin off the bottom of the leg. It's often easier to use a paper towel because you get a hold of it easier. See, it just comes right off there, just pulled right off. Right off there, like that. Like I said, it's not fun, it's not real easy, but it, it's doable, obviously, it's got it off there. Now you got these tendons hanging out, you gotta get rid of all that nasty mess, so you just cut those off. Try to get all the tendons from showing and making a mess. All the extra skin here, this can be tedious. I said time consuming. Just take your time and okay. Got one more to get here. Okay. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is there's a little there's a little bone that sticks up. I'll find it here in a second. It sticks up a little Right there, it's hard to be hard for you to see, guys, but there's a little bone that sticks up, a real small bone that sticks up right there. I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna slide my knife behind it, go down into the chicken thigh and chicken legs pretty good ways, and I'm gonna try to get this close before you can hear it snap, and I just snap it off. Hope you heard that, I don't think it or not, and pull it out. And that removes that little spindly bone most of the way, enough for you to be able to eat the leg without being in your way. Enjoy your leg that way a little better. And we could press this off here. And we pull all the skin down. Pull the lollip the whole meat down, I mean. Have the skin lay around it. Pull it down best you can. Now we'll foil the top of this, and you'll see that when we put them on the river kettle, we'll, we'll foil the top of it so the bone's covered in foil, it doesn't get burnt and nasty looking. Pull this on. Now the hard part, when I say hard part, is you don't want to cut too much meat off, but you got to get this bottom kind of flat. And there's actually some bone down here. You can see that bone. It's not at all. It's actually angled right this that way. We want to cut it off as flat as we can so the leg will stand up. So you can take your knife and cut all that off and square it off the best you can. And your leg will stand up. So we'll season it up. I won't use too much seasoning. I'm using that just to cover everything up. So I'll put it over this paper towel. You won't lose it all. Let's get a good coating on there of each one of these legs, which we did last night, like I said, the rest of them. And then we'll foil the lid, the top of it, I mean, and the leg bone. And they'll be ready to go in the kettle. So we've got 47 more of these ready to go. Um, when we get rid of our kettles ready, we'll put them on all right, folks, we're getting charcoal started now. We're going to start in the very back. We're going to start with that kettle back there. And in 15 minutes later, we'll start this charcoal on the second one. And in 15 minutes later, we'll start the charcoal on this one. That allows us to stagger a little bit. makes it easier when I'm trying to glaze all out to glaze off 48. Just do 16 at a time. It's much, much easier. I do want to show one thing with you. It's kind of a, a kind of a, if you know, you know thing, uh, charcoal bag. It came right up, just unzipped right easily, guys. It was a wonderful thing. Proof to you, there's the bag. Unzip beautifully, didn't tear it, didn't have to cut it. Man, it's my day, that's for sure. 
Uh, I'm not going to show you guys everything with the vortexes, get them going. There's a bit of, put a video here in this upper hand corner of your screen. That'll show you that and you can get an idea how that works if you want to know how. To, otherwise, we're just going to get the vortexes going. Next time you come back, we'll have chicken on that very back kettle. So there's our first 16, guys. We got them all on there really well. Got a piece of, a couple of little small chunks of apple wood on there. We'll put that lid on and let those things convection cook more or less when that heat comes up to the dome and dumps back down on top of those legs. And they'll cook in about 30 to 45 minutes. We're looking for 165. I'll glaze them at 165, leave them on there until I get about 180, 185, only because when you get up to the 180, 185 range, the fat in chicken tends to render better. So you get juicier, more tender chicken. If you go, you know, go much higher than that, it starts getting dried out and tough. But 165 is what they recommend, at least, but I get to 175, 180, something like that, let it carry over cook. But I'll glaze it at 165, put them back on there, then we get to 180, 185, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, these have been going about 30 minutes now, so I'm gonna tempt these and see where we're at on these. They're looking really, really good. Let's just check this back side over here. 169, oh gosh, it's way perfect. I need to go ahead and sit, I need to go and glaze these real quick. Hey folks, I forgot to show you how I'm glazing these. I'm gonna take a little bit of this glaze I made and just brushing it on like this, real simple, real fast. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. Excuse the wind, guys, it's pretty windy out here. And just put it back on there and let them let them glaze up. And when they do, they get about one, like I say, 180, 185. They'll be ready. So that's why I'm gonna do the rest of these and let them get up to temperature, guys. All right, folks, here we go. We're gonna give it a try. So our one we just finished it uh, finished at uh, we get to 168, I think it was when I glazed it. I pulled it off at 182. It's been sitting there about 10 minutes, let it cool down just a little bit, probably a little longer than it needed to, but that's fine. But we'll give it a try here. So here we go. Cheers, guys. Mmm. Man. Wow, that skin was bite through for sure. Mmm. Hey guys, look at that. Take another bite of that. Mmm. That is so juicy. Mmm. Gosh, that's fantastic, guys. I'm telling you, that's wonderful. I really, <laughs> I really enjoy smoke. It's smoky, it's juicy, it's get the great rub taste and that great honey peach glaze on there my gosh that's fantastic very pleased with these i know i know you will be too if you give these a try so like i said very simple to do hardest part is the prep work it's easy to do on the kettle no problem with the vortex cook them to 165 and let them go to glaze them let them go to 180 or 175 and up pull them off and let them rest for a couple minutes and bite into them they are fantastic so guys i hope you enjoyed this video hope you'll like our video and also subscribe to our channel we greatly appreciate that until next time guys i'll meet you at the smoker